Hey there, welcome back to Polysthetic. This is a follow-up video to episode 6 of my Andromedum devlogs, where I discussed finite state machines, the ones that I use for the alien AI, as well as a few other things like weapons and certain aspects of the player ships. Now, if you haven't seen that old video, you actually don't need to watch it. I think this video is sufficient. But if you'd like to see the line by line coding and the implementation, uh, feel free to watch that video after this one. However, the reason for this video is because I found a better and simpler implementation. The reason for this is because I encountered two issues with my old design. Now, the first is a major annoyance, which is a lot of code duplication. And so, for example, multiple aliens that might have the same behavior and movement need to copy the code from one alien class into another to make them work on their respective state machines. Now, the first one was annoying, but I managed to get past it. I just dealt with the code duplication. However, the second issue was a complete blocker, which is dependency injection. Now, in the other episodes, I demonstrated a weapon called the EMP. When that collides with an alien, what it does is it freezes it. But to be able to affect the alien's behavior, it'd have to inject a new state into its state machine. And I could not do that with the old design because the EMP weapon does not know what type of alien it hits. The old states required a generic parameter to tell it what type of alien it's attached to, so what type of class to expect. And that is the fatal flaw of my previous design, which is the use of generics. Let's switch over to the screen and I'll show you the old implementation uh, where it failed and I'll show you the, the new better implementation. So what we have here is the old implementation. You would have seen this in episode six and I'll go through it line by line. This is our finite state machine and this generic parameter here, the type, this determines what type of object is using this instance of the state machine. And here we've got a dictionary with string keys and state values. Now what a state is, again, it keeps a reference to the node. So for example, this could be a crab or an alien or a building, whatever needs it, needs a state machine. It has an enter and an exit method, which I'll show later. It has a process and a physics process method. All of these are virtual and do nothing by default, but they're overridden in derived classes. And so this state machine, when it's constructed, it gets a reference to its owner. It has a method for adding entries into, the, into their dictionary. It's a method for removing keys, getting the current state. And in particular importance is executing the, the physics process and the standard process methods of the current state. And when you change states, you call the exit method of the current state, change the state and then call the enter method of the new state. So I'll show you a example implementation of the old state machine. So this is on my GitHub. This is an old version of the crab script. Now you can see here it's got a finite state machine uh, with the generic parameter crab. And on its ready method, it instantiates a state machine. And here it adds all the new states. Let's look at a few example states. For example, here we've got a moving state. It keeps track of the elapsed time or if it's previously fired. So it overrides the physics uh, update method here tells the crab to move and collide. For example, here's a turning state. It tells the crab to turn, basically. Now, what the crab does on its own physics process and process methods, this is what the Godot engine calls, is it asks the state machine what the current state is, and then it executes that method. And these states have a reference back to, to the crab. So that's how the whole system communicates. Now, the problem here is, let's take a look at our goblin shark. We have to instantiate a new state machine with the Goblin Shark generic parameter. But all of the classes here also need that same generic parameter of the type Goblin Shark. But here, all of this code is pretty much exactly the same, but I cannot reuse it. So this was the first major annoyance. I couldn't create some kind of generic alien moving class that would have that crab movement behavior that we can then reuse on other alien classes. Now the fatal issue here is 
So when we have an EMP weapon here, I need some way of telling the alien not to move, basically. And then also add that particle effect of the EMP hit that you may have seen in the previous videos. But you'll notice that in the new state machine, there's no generic parameters. And that's because the generic parameters need to be set at compile time in a way. So I can't just say EMP hit uh, generic parameter alien if it then interacts with a crab. It, it actually doesn't work. That casting doesn't work. So this is the new finite state machine class. And there's two differences. The first is no generics. The second is no reference to the actual node. Here you can see that the finite state machine doesn't care what kind of object it has. And only the states care. So this class is a lot simpler. We've got an initialize state method. That way we don't need to perform if checks if there is a current state and a change state if we know for a fact that there is a previous state. That way we can call the exit method on the current state, change the state and then call the enter method on the new state. But crucially, no reference to the node that uses it. If we look at our new state class, similarly, no reference here either. So how do we communicate with an alien that uses a state machine? Well, what we actually do is create derived classes from this new state. So we click on this and I'll show you the most abstract one, which is the alien state. Now this derives from new state, but it has a reference to an alien and its constructor requires that you pass in an alien. And that's how this state has a reference to the object that needs it. And from this class, we can create generic alien states. So here, for example, we've got alien moving. And this is all the same logic you saw earlier. That was on the both the crab and the goblin shark and also the octopus and the squid classes. They all have the same behavior. But now in my new code, you can see that it just uses the generic states. So no more code duplication within these classes. So this simplifies the code dramatically. Another difference here is now that the state machine doesn't have a reference back to this program, when you instantiate these classes, these states, you need to pass this in the constructor. That way these states have a reference back to the crab. And there we go. But otherwise everything else is exactly the same. So for example, this crab during the physics process update, it just goes to its same state machine and asks it to execute the state physics execute the physics process of the current state, and so on. And so dependency injection here, if we look at the, the alien class, this is the top level class for aliens, we've added this new method here called inject state. We pass a name and type alien state to, to the state machine. And it keeps track of the previous state because when you inject a state, you want to know what the alien was doing before, so you can revert back to it. Here we can add this new state to the state machine and change the state as normally. And so this is how this EMP weapon, which uses this EMP shot class, injects its state when it collides to the alien. It gets a reference to the alien, it then calls the inject state method on the alien. This is the key that it's passing to the new state machine. And this is the new uh, state that's being injected with the constructor and with the reference to the alien that the EMP weapon has collided with. Of course, if you got differing behavior, for example, the crab firing behavior, you can override other methods. So for example, alien firing, here it's from alien state. Again, when you construct it, you need to pass a reference to its owner. And to do that, all you need to do is call the base constructor. And then you can take this class and, you, and override it if you want to modify just some portions of the behavior. So there's a lot of advantages to this new system. Thank you for watching. I know it's a bit difficult to look at just a bunch of code on the screen if you don't go through it line by line, but hopefully you take something away from this video. And in particular, I feel remiss if people took my design from the previous video and then encounter the same problems that I have. 
without creating a follow-up video to show them that there is a better solution. So if you found this video a little bit confusing, maybe go back and watch episode six of the devlogs where I discuss the first, where I show you how the first state machine is constructed line by line and also show you how to apply it to build an AI from scratch. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you have any further comments, questions, suggestions, please click them in that little box down below and I'll see you in the next video.